Oh, here it is. By the way. In terms of uh, the Arab merchants moving into the community, uh, there's a strong insensitivity on the part of these merchants in as much as they know little or nothing about the community and they don't seem to be really concerned about the community and the situations that address the community. If there is... <laughs> What does that even mean? The dude's running a fucking gas station. This man ain't, he ain't fixing all the problems. He just standing behind the counter at the gas station, motherfucker. <laughs> salute what? to fire, man. He says, salute to a great panel tonight. Everyone sees the false flag for what it is. The real question is when they declare war. I personally believe sometime before 2030. <sighs> Son, man, you know, just walk in the gas station, start talking about his personal problems over the counter while the fucking Sandman <laughs> ain't fixed it yet. <laughs> Goddamn roof leaking. What fucking Muhammad, get your ass over there. Fix my roof. You don't understand my community. <sighs> oh, man. Oh, my God. In terms of uh, the Arab merchants moving into the community, uh, there's a strong insensitivity on the part of these merchants in as much as they know little or nothing about the community and they don't seem to be really concerned about the community and the situations that address. Shout out to Hezekiah News. Make sure y'all subscribe to Hezekiah News, man. If y'all want to see this stuff, you got, <clears throat> tell me he got a library Congress full of this stuff, man. He's, um, he's a very, very important part of the channel, unbeknownst to him the community if there is a store he's a man trying to make a living what difference does it make if he's an arab or he's black good evening i'm john calloway and welcome to chicago tonight one of the awful truths of our lives is that poor people in big cities often pay relatively higher prices for food, housing, and services that better off people who could easily afford to pay those higher prices. It isn't enough to be poor. You get to get gouged on top of it. But those who demand the higher prices of the poor will tell you that they are not gouging them. They say they are passing along to them the higher costs of doing business in high crime, high insurance rate areas of the city. So it seems to be a no-win situation. And sometimes it spoils, it spills over into inter-ethnic conflict, such as the historic tension between Jewish store owners and landlords who continued doing business in black ghetto areas long after most other whites had moved out in the early or mid-1960s. Wow. You hear that, Fisherman? Yeah, they say, I ain't giving up on my pet. I ain't going to just throw my pet out in the cold. I love my pets. Love him. Tariq Wolf, man. Who are you, man? Tariq Wolf going once. Yeah, can I be heard now? Yeah, man. What's up, man? Who are you? Yeah, my name is Tariq Wolf. I'm uh 26 years old. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Oh, okay. So what is what's what is your um what 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 are you, what brought you here today, man? Uh, I kind of found I found about the channel from a guy named Sergeant Willie Pete. He has a YouTube channel, but he's more like a pro black guy. So he talked about your channel in one of his videos. So I looked up the channel and now I'm here and I'm listening to, I guess, this live today. But I've heard some other videos. I understand what the channel is about and I understand the direction that you're trying to go in. And today, I guess, well, earlier you all was talking about the three soldiers that was killed in Jordan in the Middle East. I don't feel like any black person should join the U.S. military, but if you feel like that's the best situation, that's the that's the best place for you to go in whatever current situation that you're in. I think that's okay, but I don't think any black person should join the American military or the the American military complex. I just don't think it's good for us because in return we don't get anything that benefits and helps our community in the long run. Well, hold on, man. Let me, well, let me stop you right there. Oh, go, go ahead. I'll let you go and get at him first. Go ahead. I was going to say, well, seeing the, the damage and the carnage that the Sun Man creates in America, I feel like we should um contribute. And like what? What type of carnage? Uh, you said you watched the channel, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
and, and shout out to Willie Pete, man. Willie Pete is a, is like literally like a a YouTube god, man. He 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 was around YouTube in the fifteen years ago, and he was um like the beginning of all this shit, the black manosphere type talking points and shit. Salute to him, man. Um, I didn't know he um watched the channel, but salute to Willie Pete, man, a, a YouTube legend, man. Um, but yeah, listen, man. Um. We'll get into some of the carnage if you, if you stick around, man. We'll get into some of the things that black people bring to this country in a little bit, man. But um, salute to Muramasa, man. Muramasa says, "What's up, ah? The NYC struck down Mayor Adams' veto and passed the How Many Stops Act. Basically, cops have to do any report when they talk to anyone, witness on the street, which is ridiculous. Yeah, man." Um, they get what they deserve, man. I got family in New York, but uh, th it, it's sad, man. Um, we, we've been covering that, man. Um, we saw that coming. Um, but yeah, um, back to you, Tariq, man. Tariq Wolf, man. Um, uh, let's let's slow walk this, man. Let, let's 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 take it away from that. What do you think about Arab um, grocery store owners in black um, neighborhoods? Do you think that um, do you think that the Arabs should just be able to do their business? Or do you think that they owe the black community something for doing business in the black community? No, no other group of people, no other community owe us anything but ourselves. The problem is, which I know this is like a talking point, people come into the community, they set up their shops, they take our money and use that money to fund and help themselves here in the states and out of state. I mean, not here, not yeah, here in the states and out of the country. Um, if they, I mean, it's it's not against the law for them to do it. It would have to be like for them to come here. It's not against the law for them to come and set up their own shops and shut up their stores or whatever. It would have to be it would have to be black people to take their own initiative to open up whatever abandoned buildings now, around you. Are you right let me let me stop you right there. So you say you say um, it, it's up to black people to take the initiative. Well, it's 2024. This thing right here came out in the 80s. This this thing we're watching came out in the 80s, probably 40 years ago, right? When this, they were having this thing where most of the businesses in the black community were run by Arabs. Um, when is like when is that initiative going to be taken, man? Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna yeah. ask when when is gonna start opening all these black stores and gas stations and grocery stores and clothing stores. I was I was waiting because. Yeah. I'm 43 I don't, years old. I'm still waiting. Yeah, I'm not a fan of anecdotes, but when I, I know anecdotes is really bad to use in any type of argument. But growing up, people, the black people around me told me about the stores that black people had owned that they sold to whoever, people that didn't look like them in order to get the quick money to give up the property in order to whatever. And I know that people came from, this is what I'm against. Immigration. I'm not Republican or Democrat. I like I agree with both sides. I like the Second Amendment, but I don't like, you know, immigration. I like, you know, free college. I like free. I want free health care, but I don't like um, defunding the police. That's retarded. I think we need to give the police more money to make them go to school for more, you know, longer than have whatever is required. Like, I think it's like a, I think it's like two years or a couple months or whatever. But I, I don't want to get into that. But so, okay, okay. I don't, I don't think that Arab, I don't think that Arab people are in a wrong for um, what they're doing. I know that people came here from other countries, immigrants came here from other countries, and was given money and incentives to come here and build up here in America. I don't, I don't know for what reason, but I know they was given money to come hold here. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Blacks get two trillion dollars every five years. The black community. Oh, what? I mean, I mean, we 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 are operating at a three hundred and ninety billion dollar deficit. For what? You know, for what we get, what it takes to take care of us in this country, what it takes to subsidize us in this country. We're, we're like what? How much do it take for Caucasian people to subsidize them? I know you're not talking about like pure money, like pure like one dollar bills, like actual money. I know yes, it's not like. Are you talking about cash? We're talking about cash, what? my man. Um, but let me let me. You know what? I don't want to go there. But let, let, let yeah. me just let's just see. Let's 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 go. This month, a race relations periodical called the Chicago Reporter published a lead article entitled "Captive Grocery Market." 
pits blacks against Arabs. We felt that the article raised questions that deserve further public discussion and debate, and we will have that discussion and debate right after this background report from Chicago Tonight correspondent Royal Kennedy. Uh, uh, the rock in the building. Uh -oh. Kali, the grocery and liquor store place their it all day poppy in the hallway for anyone used to the spacious supermarket chain stores this is an inconceivable way to shop customers in this tiny grocery and liquor store place their orders to a clerk behind a wall of bulletproof plexiglass everything from milk and eggs to liquor and candy is behind glass and beyond the reach of customers until they have paid for it. Often. Okay, now, really quickly, too, because I want you to, I don't want you to be too long winded, man, because that's not what we do here. This ain't like the, this ain't like the, the, the fucking um, Smithsonian Life Story Channel, man. Quickly, <laughs> man, what do you think about the fact that, like, 1989, man, these people, they have to keep their shit behind bulletproof glass. They have to keep themselves and the products behind bulletproof glass to operate in a black community. To just have make have a profit in a black community. What what do you think We're, about that? Don't tell me about anything other than what you think about that. I mean, you you asked me. I know where you're trying to send me to, but it takes no, a lot no, to. No, 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 no. You you missing? You, I'm gonna say it one more time. Yeah. What do you think? What are your thoughts about the fact that these people have to keep themselves and their products behind bulletproof glass just to turn a profit? I'm not gonna get get kicked out after the answer, yeah. Nah, but I mean, if you don't answer, I might kick you out. <laughs> I mean, I you know it's it's clearly like that's insane that you got to put it behind bulletproof glass, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think so too. And and here's the thing. Them being black wouldn't change that. If they were black people, they would still, in order to turn a profit, they would still have to be behind bulletproof glass, and they would still have to have the products behind bullet behind bulletproof glass. The way the if who was black? Like, yeah. so, okay. so the customers couldn't get their little grubby little fucking fingers on the products until they paid for it. The black customers, right? When used to the spacious yeah. supermarket chain stores, this is an inconceivable way to shop. Customers in this tiny grocery and liquor store place their orders to a clerk behind a wall of bulletproof plexiglass. Everything from milk and eggs to liquor and candy is behind glass and beyond the reach of customers until they have paid for it. Often customers say the food is spoiled, the stores are dirty, and the prices are higher than elsewhere in the city. The customers in most of these stores are low-income blacks. The store's owners often are Arab Americans. On the west side, the hostility between the two groups has increased. There's a strong insensitivity on the part of these merchants in as much as they know little or nothing about the community and they don't seem to be really concerned about the community and the situations that address the community. And we have a serious problem with that. 24th Ward Democratic Committeeman Jesse Miller has called for a two-week boycott of the neighborhood's Arab-owned stores. Miller says the merchants make okay. He's calling for a two week boycott of the Arab stores. Um, he fund the Arabs, yeah. But all the stores are Arabs. So, when <laughs> after these okay. clothes, then what What term yeah, comes to be, light? Yeah, the food, a food smoke, desert, gas, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 here's the thing about black people black people can't sustain a boycott more than a few hours man because black black america yeah those boycotts in um with the bus in um what was that uh with rosa park i forgot what the city that was whatever that city was um with mobile yeah with, with selma bus, or, Mo, Mo, montgomery or whatever it was actually alabama um whenever they did the bus boycott in the 60s they they had a lot of funding from like you know the juice crew and everything and they had their own buses, like they created their own bus system, like a, a fleet. They had a fleet of vans that could take people where they needed to go and ran sim similar routes to the bus line. Without that, that 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 fucking boycott wouldn't have lasted more than a day. Black people can't boycott. We don't have the 
gratification deferment ability to, to boycott. So two things, this boycott, this calling for boycott is fucking, he doesn't understand his people. He doesn't understand that they can't do that. And two, let's say you do boycott these businesses, right? Where, do you, where are the black owned business to replace them? Where is this? What area is this? This Chicago. is you said it's 19, 1989. Chicago. Where do you give your money? Do you give your money to fucking Walmart or CVS instead of giving it to the Arab? Because like, isn't that giving it to the white man? I mean, it, yeah, I guess it will be. Are you against all boycotts at any point in time in history? I think black people can't do it. I think I don't think black people have the ability. Y'all boycotted um, Gucci when they did the little. Why you say y'all? You black too. I didn't boycott Gucci when they did the turtleneck with the lips on it, and y'all boycotted I Gucci for seventy-two hours, and then it was over. Then you didn't hear nothing else about it. Um, y'all boycott all these places. Y'all always boycotting somewhere for 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 six hours, and then you never mm -hmm. hear nothing about it again. How do you feel about Republicans boycotting boycotting what it was a beer that had a trans person on the cover or like on a you beer can and they, Bud Bud Light, but they actually did it? Do you remember the, the Bud Light? Those white people did mm -hmm. that. They boycotted it. They had the follow through to do it. They, they cost they, millions they cost, and millions of dollars. Yeah, they cost Bud Light. They made Bud Light come to their knees. They, they made Bud Light answer to them. Black folk are good at protesting. I don't want you to get protesting and confused with boycotting. We get a, we we will make you come and address our needs by protesting, but never by boy never do our boycotts work, man. Our boycotts are like we're like one for fucking a thousand. Hostility between the two groups has increased. There's a strong insensitivity on the part of these merchants, in as much as they know little or nothing about the community, and they don't seem to be really concerned about the community and the situations that address the community. And we have a serious problem with that. 24th Ward Democratic Committeeman Jesse Miller has called for a two-week boycott of the neighborhood's Arab-owned stores. Miller Democrat says the merchants group? make money from the community by now, providing inferior service and taking advantage of the neighborhood's problems. Anytime you have an area that's depressed like this, it certainly you don't need a lot of businesses coming into the area and then uh, uh, selling um, uh, liquor being one of their main items of sale. Despite Miller's call for a boycott, we found no evidence of it in his neighborhood. The Arabone stores here appear to be doing normal business, but not because... See what I'm saying? They don't care about this boycott, man. I'm trying to give me some fucking moonshine on some goddamn Thunderbird, man. I need to give me a <laughs> bottle of Thunderbird, man. Fuck some that shit, shit, man. Some Cisco and shit. What was that, 1989? Yeah. Cisco. <laughs> yeah, man. Cisco. I'm, I'm trying to give me some wild Irish rose, man. You're talking about so, like, boycott. When we were talking about Carnage earlier, like you yeah. asked, you know what? What were we referring to? And we're referring to the fact that in order to have a business, you have to operate behind metal and bulletproof uh, barriers in order to sell, you know, simple goods that have low value. Like that is the. And that's we're referring, referring to, to. Is that referring to just Black Americans? Yes. Um, do you think anywhere? In else in the world, they don't have to operate in that same way. Not even bulletproof, but have some sort of protection. Yeah, in order yeah, in other in other Jamaica? black parts of the world, yes. You've been to in some what South American areas. parts of the world would they have to operate like that, or do you just have black examples? Some Central South American America. areas, yes. Which ones? Like Venezuela, Nicaragua, yada yada. Say that Nicaragua again. Nicaragua. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like oh, that that god. is where that is why that's what we're referring to the fact that you have to have so many measures just to have a simple why do you think that is store. because black people commit still lots young. of violent crime he's still young man dude you said what i said you still young man so because i'm still a young man i'm supposed to believe that black people are prone to more violence be other yes. than caucasian people hey, because right, of man, play the video. hey where you from detroit right yeah, hey, yeah play, play, go to detroit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey, but hey man, I walk around all up. I walk all up and down eight mile all the time. I am. I never experience any issues. I know it's a lot of crime, but I, me, I haven't seen it with my own eyes. Ask you a question. So all the crime that happened. But I know before, anecdotes aren't a good way to go about things. But go ahead. Next question. So all the crimes that happen in Detroit, all the shooting crimes. Who do you think is doing all yeah. the crimes? Mostly black people. This is a mostly black area. Yeah. Okay, so okay, so not oh, not from where you're from. Anywhere, pick anywhere in America. All the violence, yeah. gun shootings that's going on. Who do you think are doing those shootings? I don't. Most of the shootings, yes. I guess it would have to be. I guess it would have to be black. Okay. Yeah, it would have to be black. Yeah. Look at we, the, I mean, we make. Make... Look at the look at the gun memorial from the city of Rome, right? Like. Like every single person just about that gets murdered in your city with guns is um is black. And you say I mean I'm from Detroit. This is mostly it's a mostly black area. Of course it's gonna be mainly black people. No, okay, but here's the thing too. Like if this was a white area, they would have like four murders a year. So it's like not only do you have a, a, everybody getting killed is black, yeah. but you have a lot but that's of like people. saying Japan. That's like saying India doesn't have a bunch of shootings, but of course not. But they got a bunch of rapings. They got other crimes that they do, whatever you can have access to. And in black areas, and in, especially in America, where you are allowed to weapons, most of these crimes is based off of poverty. These people are trying to get money. If you was to change the black economics, I don't think these crimes would be as bad as they are. And especially if you took the money away from when you take money away from white people, they go crazy. They trying to have a whole revolution in Texas right now because of the poverty levels in America. The economy is destroyed. Yeah, you're still young, man. But um, you have you ever been to Jamaica or Haiti? Any any anywhere else besides America was the again? You said Haiti. Haiti was the asking, they got destroyed in turn. I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Have you ever been to any other country where it's black people besides America? Uh, no. Okay, so you don't even know black people at all, man. You're still young. You just watch for a few more. But you think white? So you think you think Caucasian people are any better? They they destroyed. You know the Middle East was at one point the Middle East was like the pinnacle of all human civilization. Caucasians destroyed the Middle East. Yeah, but here's the thing you don't understand. Hold on. Here's the thing you don't understand about that time when the Middle East was the pinnacle with the Acadian. It was way long ago. I know that. Oh, hold on. No, 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 no. Those people were were um were, were, were white people. Those were white people. Oh my. Yeah. No. 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 They they were. Like what happened? What I'm saying is, at that point, at that time, white people lived in that area. Oh, they, they were pushed out of that area, or they moved out over over the years. If you look at those those groups that were um the 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 the, the um the groups that mm -hmm. were um mm -hmm. in that area, the the Sumerians. Do you have you ever heard of the Sumerians? Yeah, I know that was the first civilization, but some people say Egypt was older than them. But yeah, well, even Egyptians, they were they were Greeks. They were they were Greek lineage, um, not the original. Uh, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The people who built the pyramids and the people who were found in the pyramids, in the mm -hmm. tombs, in the in the in, in the tombs, those people were white people. Um. They weren't Arabs. They weren't blacks. They were white people. Um, How come Caucasian so, people stopped practicing that when they got to Greece? How come they stopped building pyramids and stopped practicing the religion and stuff? Well, I, I don't, I don't know about all that because like, where the world isn't linear, like a lot of black. But people culture, think, culture, linear. all Caucasian culture is the same. Egyptian culture was copied by Romans. The Romans was copied was copied by the Celts. The Celts copied by the Vikings. The Vikings was copied by. It just hold keeps on, going with Caucasian. Hold, hold on, man. Hold on, man. All I'm saying is, advanced civilization is a hallmark of white people. Wherever you see advanced civilizations. Mm -hmm. That's it. Lets you know that white people were there. Now you do have are Asian people that, Caucasian also. Hold on, those those oh. Asian cultures had a point where they stopped, where they didn't innovate further. They had a, they had a, they had a, they had a they had a ceiling on their innovation. Asian cultures um, 
couldn't get Asian people use gunpowder gun power to the Caucasian people, and Caucasian people use gunpowder to take over the world. I, I'll, I'll give you the written language. When it comes to written language, yes, Asian people surpass gliders in written language. They surpass them in language and things like that. Don't get me wrong. But for the most part, in history, civilizations are a glider, a white person um, thing. For the most part, I'm not talking about every single one, but the most of the civilizations in the history of the world have been created by white people. Now, is that mm-hmm. is is that because that's how their minds work? They work together. They can um, communicate together. They can they have gratification deferment. Do they have certain things that make that? Um, where, 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 where they're able to do that? Yes. And do other groups um, have things where they lack those 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 traits of being able to work together? If Black people had a trait where they could work together, where they could defer gratification, where they had, um, 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 they, they, they wouldn't fragment into such small groups all the time, um, and they wouldn't, um, and, they, and they had high trust societies, yes, Black mm-hmm. people could create civilizations. But Black people yeah. don't have those traits. Can I ask you one question? Yeah. Why the ancient, before the Spaniards came, and these were darker skinned people, how come ancient, I know y'all, how come ancient South, I guess we could call it, we could call it South America now or Mexico.